It's finally here, the Slate, a mod that converts your Game Boy Advance SP into this stunning masterpiece, a form factor that is both familiar and new, taking the flip enclosure of the original SP and making it into a solid slab reminiscent of the original Game Boys. So let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito, and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, we'll be taking a look at this. This thing of beauty is called the Slate, designed by Mako and brought to us by Retro Game Repair Shop. This has been some time in the making, and I've eagerly been waiting for its release ever since it was announced a long, long time ago. But here we are, Slate in hand, and I couldn't be more excited. So just a bit of background, like I stated previously, the Slate was designed by Mako, a veteran Game Boy modder and enthusiast. He has a wonderful YouTube channel where he covers tons of Game Boy mods, such as screen and shell upgrades, among many other things. I'll have a link to his channel down below so you can check it out. Now in prototyping the Slate, Mako worked very closely with the folks over at Retro CNC, who are metal machining gurus. They helped Mako refine his design so that when it came time to manufacture these shells, everything would go smoothly. And then there's Retro Game Repair Shop, who sort of brought this whole project together and prepped it for retail to the general public so folks like you and me can purchase one of our own. Oh, and did I mention that you can save 10% on your slate purchase by using the coupon code TITO at checkout? Sorry for the cheesy plug, but it's a great way to save money on your entire Retro Game Repair Shop order and support the channel at the same time. Anyway, Retro Game Repair Shop was also instrumental in orchestrating the production of the custom IPS screen for the Slate, which is arguably one of the mod's defining features. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna go over everything you'll need to build your very own Slate. Then I'll show you how to put one together, go over all of its features, compare the Slate to some of the other alternative options that are available, namely the boxy pixel offerings, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So first of all, the kit comes very nicely packaged in these hard plastic cases so you can rest assured that everything will arrive safely when shipped out. The first item in the packaging is the shell itself. In this video, I'll be building this beautiful solid brass one. However, Retro Game Repair Shop offers many anodized color options in machined aluminum, such as this silver one, which has a very Apple-like aesthetic. Included with the shells are the machine screws as well as the two replacement metal rods for the L and R triggers, which are slightly shorter than the original ones. We'll get into why these are needed later in the video. Next, I got these optional brass buttons to go with the brass shell. Now it should be noted that the slate also works with the original plastic SP buttons, so these metal ones are an optional upgrade and are not required. Additionally, the buttons come in machined aluminum and are anodized in an array of colors such as these red ones. Moving on, let's go over the screen kit which is actually required for this mod. Like I stated earlier, this is a custom laminated IPS kit designed specifically for the slate. It uses a DMG styled lens, but again it's laminated with the IPS panel. Also included in the kit is the LCD driver board, some insulating film, a ribbon cable, and some strands of wire which I actually won't be using. And of course, you'll need a donor SP console with a fully functioning motherboard. Okay, so that's everything we'll be using to build the slate. Now, let me show you how to put one together. All right, first thing we need to do is extract the motherboard from our donor SP. You'll of course need to first remove the battery and unfasten the six screws securing the rear shell. Once inside, unfasten the three screws securing the motherboard. Then slightly lift the motherboard out and de-latch the LCD ribbon cable. Great, with the motherboard out, let's start soldering some wires which will be used to activate the brightness feature of our new IPS screen. Go ahead and tin the TP2 test point which corresponds to the select button. Then solder a wire to it. It helps you use different color wires for each of the different points we'll be soldering to so that we can easily remember what points they're attached to. Next, tin up TP9 shown here, which is used to tap the left trigger button signal. 
and again, solder a wire to it. And lastly, tin the test pad shown here next to the B with the circle around it. This will be used to pull the right trigger signal. After a bit of wire management, making sure the wires are out of the way, this is what it should look like. Next, grab the driver board. Open the latch on the ZIF connector and then carefully insert this end of the ribbon cable with the contacts facing down. Then attach the IPS panel to the driver board. And before moving forward, it's a good idea to give the IPS kit a test to make sure everything is working okay. Great, everything seems to be working as it should. After detaching the IPS kit from the SP motherboard, go ahead and grab the slate front shell. Next, let's prep the IPS kit by removing the release paper to expose the adhesive. Then carefully slot in the laminated IPS panel, inserting it at an angle towards the left side of the shell, and then pressing it carefully, but firmly into place. The tolerances are pretty remarkable, so expect a tight fit. Now you can go ahead and reattach the IPS ribbon cable to the SP motherboard. After locking it in, go ahead and start to populate the shell with the speaker and buttons. Since I'm using the metal buttons, I won't be needing to install the silicone membranes. If you plan on using the original plastic buttons, you will need to reuse the membranes. Next, secure the motherboard using three of the included machine screws. Okay, now let's solder our three wires for brightness control to the driver board. The wire for the left trigger goes to the pad labeled L. The wire for the right trigger goes to the one labeled R, and the one for the select button goes to the pad labeled SEL. And this is what everything should look like when it's all done. Fold the IPS panel ribbon cable like shown so that it doesn't get pinched when we attach the metal backing. Then carefully slide the backing into place at an angle as shown so that it fits under the two expansion ports. Once it's fully seated, secure it with two more of the included machine screws. Now let's prep the rear shell. To do so, remove both the L and R triggers by carefully unhooking the spring from the rear shell as shown. We need to replace the metal dowel that the triggers pivot on with these shorter ones. Here you can see the small difference in size between the two. And to keep the metal dowels from popping out, you will need to add a dab of crazy glue to one of the ends of the dowel and then insert it into the rear shell. After letting the glue cure, reinstall the triggers and springs. Then install the power switch cover, and then drop on the rear shell. Secure it by using the remaining five screws. Please note, do not attempt to fasten a screw to the one inside the battery bay. The screw hole is no longer used for this mod. After installing the battery, let's put on the final touches, starting with the Nintendo badge and the rear label to really finish things off. Peel the protective film on the LCD and you're done. I always wondered why Nintendo never made a vertically oriented Game Boy Advance. It just seemed like a logical offering given the Game Boy's history with that form factor. But in any case, there are now mod kits available to us so we can make our own, and my goodness, the results are incredible. So with that, let's take a look at all the unique features the Slate has to offer. First is the beautifully crafted machine shell. The one I have here is brass, and I think it looks stunning. Here you can see all the beautifully crafted details like the slight taper in its design, the cutout for the Nintendo badge, and the pre-installed LED diffusers. It also weighs a ton, coming in at about 290 grams without a game installed. To put that in perspective, the aluminum shell by itself weighs in at only 60 grams, while the brass shell on its own weighs in at 187 grams. That is a staggering difference in weight. But besides the weight, both the brass and aluminum options are identical. Another really cool feature is, as I said previously, the tapered design. The small slant really feels nice in the hands. It sort of changes things up, making the overall design language of the device more interesting. And speaking of design, I absolutely love the compact size. 
It's just so pocketable and the more rounded features lets you easily slip the device into your pocket. Now something I really like is that the shell comes pre-installed with an LED light diffuser. This is just one of those small details that you never really think about, but adds to the overall premium look and feel of the product. Additionally, while there are nice machined metal buttons available for the slate, it is also compatible with regular plastic SP buttons, which means you are not locked into one or the other. I myself prefer the metal buttons, which in my opinion really complement the metal shell. I also have to say that the tolerances are super tight. When building the slate, everything just fits together precisely and firmly, making a very solid package. Now one of the more noticeable features is the removal of the brightness button. This allowed for the screen to be mounted lower and make the overall size of the console more compact. With the button removed, you can change the brightness level by holding down the select button and tapping the L trigger to lower the brightness and the R trigger to increase it. Now, moving on to the screen itself, you can see that it takes some of its design cues from the original DMG. This one here specifically is a pre-production unit, however the final version will be very similar to this one. It's a laminated IPS screen which virtually eliminates any air gap between the panel and the lens, again adding to that premium finish. And of course, the image quality is what we have come to expect from these modern IPS panels. Everything is crisp and vibrant. So those are all the features of the Slate. Now let's take a look at how it compares with some of the other options that are out there. For this, I'll be looking primarily at other machined aluminum kits from BoxyPixel. Here I have both the original unhinged as well as the V2 budget version, which is similar to the Slate in that it only provides the front shell and reuses the rear shell. So in looking at all of them, the most immediate and striking difference to me is the size. The slate is noticeably shorter and thinner than both BoxyPixel products. Both the unhinged models are 133mm tall, while the slate is 125mm. The slate comes in at 15mm at the thinnest point of the taper, and 17mm at its thickest. The V2 budget unhinged shell is 20mm thick, while the original all-metal unhinged is the thickest of the bunch, coming in at 23mm. Looking at the front of these handhelds reveals yet another difference. The slate removed the brightness button, as we discussed previously, whereas it's retained on the boxy pixel kits. Brightness control of course is still functional, and just requires a bit more effort to enable. The slate also boasts a more rounded and curved finish, while the boxy pixel kits are more angular and flat. Both versions of the Unhinged allows for the installation of a USB-C port for charging, as well as a 3.5mm headphone jack, while the Slate doesn't. Now installing both those options does require more soldering to enable, and I think Mako just wanted to keep the Slate installation process relatively simple. Additionally, the original all-metal boxy pixel kit allows for the installation of a larger capacity battery. Both the V2 and the Slate can only use regular GBA batteries since it reuses the original rear shell. And the last physical difference of these products are the buttons. The Slate can use original plastic SP buttons, and you have the option to upgrade to metal ones, giving you quite a bit of flexibility. On the other hand, both boxy pixel kits require you to use their proprietary buttons as they are not compatible with original SP buttons. So those are the main physical differences between the two options. But now let's take a look at the price. An aluminum Slate costs about $94. But if you use the coupon code TITO at checkout, you can save about $9.50, bringing the slate down to about $85.50. The budget V2 unhinged costs considerably less at $59. But since it only works with boxy pixel buttons, you also have to buy those, which will cost another $21 for a total of $80. The all metal unhinged will cost you $95. But again, you need to buy the metal buttons, which cost $21, and will end up totaling 116 bucks. So the slate will run at about a $14 premium over the V2 budget unhinged. But again, if you use my coupon code, the difference between the two is closer to $5. Additionally, the screens for the slate are custom designed and required for the mod. These will cost $65, while the boxy pixel offerings are compatible with several IPS models, such as the funny playing kits, which typically cost around 58 bucks. And while we're on the topic of the screen, the unhinged models are compatible with OEM SP screens, while the slate is not. Just something to consider. So while the screen is more expensive, you have to remember that these are custom designed and built specifically to the slate specifications. 
And lastly, the other difference is that the slate comes with the LED light diffuser already installed, which is fantastic. BoxyPixel offers a separate light pipe for sale for about $2.50. Okay, now let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, I have to say that I absolutely love the design of the slate. To me, it seems that Mako prioritized the size of the shell, delivering a slim and sleek design that is very pocketable. At the moment, this is my go-to GBA for gaming. However, that's not to discount the boxy pixel shells by any measure. Those are fantastic options as well. Another pro is that these shells are compatible with regular plastic SP buttons. You aren't locked into getting proprietary metal ones like you are with boxy pixel. Additionally, I know some folks prefer the feel of the plastic buttons, so having this flexibility to keep the original buttons is pretty nice. And lastly, while a small feature, I love that the LED light pipe was included in the design. Being pre-installed means I didn't have to think about it, and it's already there ready to go. It's a small detail, but it just adds that little bit to the overall design. Okay, now let's get into the cons. Now there really isn't too much to say here, and honestly, it just comes down to personal preference. One con is the removal of the brightness button, which makes this mod require a bit more soldering if you want brightness control. The slate requires three wires to be installed, while the unhinged only requires one. And if you use an original SP screen with the unhinged, there's no soldering required at all. For me, this wasn't too big a deal because it isn't like brightness control was a removed function. It's still there, but it just requires a bit more soldering. Additionally, the slate is a bit more expensive than the comparable budget unhinged shell. It is a different offering with different features, and it's up to you whether you think it's worth the slate premium. And the last con is that the slate only works with its own custom screen. The boxy pixel offerings do work with an array of IPS kits that are already out there, as well as the original SP screen. However, so long as the slate screen is being produced, that shouldn't be an issue. Additionally, you can build your own slate screen using a standard SP IPS panel and a DMG screen lens from Bluish. So there's always that option as well. All right, so those are the pros and cons. Now, if you're interested in getting a slate shell of your own, you can pre-order one now at Retro Game Repair Shop. They are expected to ship out sometime in June. And remember, if you use my coupon code TITO at checkout, you can save 10% on your entire order. I mean, who doesn't like to save money? Plus, you'll be supporting the channel. Anyway, let me know what you all think. Will you be getting the slate or the unhinged? Or both? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next Thursday.